The eight-year-old girl, who's the sole survivor of a bus crash that claimed the lives of 45 Botswana nationals last week, has boarded a flight out of Bulukwane this morning. The little girl and her mother are scheduled to connect to Khaburoni at the Oratambo International Airport this afternoon. SAPC News reporter Pimani Baloi has more for us. The eight-year-old girl who was the sole survivor of a bus crash that claimed 45 lives of uh, Botswana nationals at the Mamatlakala Bridge in between Mokopane and Marken last week Thursday has flown out of Limpopo to the Oartambo International Airport where she's bound to connect to a flight to Khaborone where she'll be reconnected with her family. The little girl was brought into the airport in a, in a wheelchair. She was wheeled into the airport in a wheelchair change was uh, carried into that flight we so we were able to get a glimpse of her and we saw a few bandages on her head but we understand she's in a good health state to speak more about how she actually is we joined by the emis of health the end in Bobo, uh, dr popi ramatuba emisi thank you so much for your time uh, the little girl we've seen her did she really need the wheelchair can she walk herself what state is she in as she goes back to Botswana uh, good day uh, what we can indicate is that she's in good health she's in good spirit she she can walk on her own however like any other person who has uh, just survived that if uh, those physical injuries um, it's it's not yet easy uh, for her to can walk for a long distance because she still has got bandages all over the body. We've done such a, a number of uh, lacerations that she has sustained. So because of that, that's why you saw us making her comfortable uh, to to be to wheel her uh, up until such time uh, the physiotherapies have indicated what type of exercises she can do even on the on the hands so that she doesn't keep her hands like so so but in terms of her to be ready for discharge in terms of a surgeon and also other physicians that were looking after her they said she's ready to go home her wounds are healing very well and she's been said to be a miraculous child um, and it's been the department, your department's main priority to ensure that she's able to go back home. Is she going to a health facility when she gets to Botswana? Will she be able to go home and be reintegrated into society, maybe go back to school? The, the state she's in, in terms of physical injuries, she's ready to go home. Uh, to can be reunited with the community but in terms of the mental health she still needs to go through a lot of counseling we spend this whole uh, four days with her uh, doing a lot of in intense counseling uh, by our clinical psychologist uh, but but who also you also know when we are dealing with a trauma like this one uh, healing will not only happen it's not an event it's something that will require uh, you go through a lot of phases and and if we are not carefully trading on that we can end up uh, having a child with a serious post-traumatic stress disorder which can end up with psychotic features in future hence you will remember I have always been insisting that let's trend carefully when it comes to uh, exposing this particular child it's, it's not only because of the child act we are also much more worried about her mental well-being to say if she's not supported and be provided with a space to can heal and at the right time she will be able to talk about what what transpired we can damage her mentally uh, permanently so so for now uh, we, we have communicated with our counterparts when when she as she has just boarded her plane she will be land, landing in connecting in or tambo to land in Khaburun. from there officials in Botswana will take them uh, take over we have provided them with uh, the, the prescription and the medication that she needs and the dressings that she needs but also the referral letter from our psychologist and our psychiatrist to say 
what more do they really need to continue so they, it will depend on the clinicians that side if they feel like they want her to go through mental health a uh, treatment a uh, preventative uh, treatment in the facility it's fine but if they think integrating her with the community which is also another way of fast tracking healing uh, that's why you saw us pu uh, insisting that we must do whatever we can to get her mother here but, but her pre the presence of the mother is the one that fast tracked uh, the treatment because in the beginning she was also refusing to take medication she didn't want injections she didn't want all those but the presence of the mother has assisted us uh, to be where we are today let me see, you, you've mentioned from day one, personally, you've interacted with her. Is there any explanation? I understand this is a child and we need to respect her. But is there any explanation as to how she could have survived that deadly crash? Uh, you, you know, she, she, she likes avoiding this topic. Uh, but yesterday she was able to, to share some. Uh, as she was talking to me and her mom that she just saw herself being thrown uh, out of the window uh, the window and and this we, we we could just sit and say probably the grandmother here says i'm going to save my grandchild here uh, when when she sees the bus uh, swaving and and she, she just said that's what she saw and the next thing she was standing on the road stopping the car from there the, she never remember anything she just remember when she was with us at the hospital so so you could see that it's still going to take time so she there was a period where she passed out uh, probably when the help uh, arrived that's when she she lost uh, 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 that that part she can't remember but hence i'm saying if we allow her to time she will be able to explain what's happening uh, she's indeed a miraculous baby i, I really un understand how a child in that at that age is able to have such sharp memory but the first thing she would remember as i've said is all the two cell numbers of her mother my mother's name we were told by her she gave us the mother's name she wanted to talk about her mother and nobody else and she wanted us to phone her mother immediately so it was it was something and then she would go on and and sleep for a very long time uh, but before she went on to sleep, she, she shared with us all those those numbers. So I strongly believe if she continue to get therapy, she will be able to tell us more. Let me see more to a sad part of this story. 45 lives were lost and you are in the process of identifying and ensuring that they are repatriated back to their families. Last Yesterday there were post-mortems being conducted on the bodies that were in a state that they could be visually identifiable. Take us through how far that process is going. We are done with all the, the, the post-mortems that were uh, scheduled for yesterday. For those that are identifiable, we are done. It will, we will be guided by the relevant departments and also the people, government of Botswana. If, when do they want uh, those bodies to be repatriated? But the, the process can, can be done any time, any day. The, the, the only challenge, as, as we have indicated yesterday, will be the ones that will require DNA uh, sampling to be used as uh, the, 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 the ones uh, towards identification, positive identification. So, so with that one, uh, we are relying more on Dr. General Morawuzi from South African Police Services at, at the victim a identification unit and he has put up a team yesterday already they had already started to to join us and we are also having dr uh, mama shella who is our head of forensic pathology in the province as i speak today he's there in, in mukopani with the team uh, the, the, we've already re received forensic anthropologists all those teams that are needed all those experts and post-mortems are being done today for those that are the charred body because we still need to do post-mortem to get the tissue that will be used for comparison so so we are we are still on 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 course to to make sure that the people of Botswana find closure because the only way you find closure is where you see 
these are the remains and you bury them and you continue to tell your children and your grandchildren that here lies your uncle, here lies your father, here lies your sister. Thank you so much, MEC. That's the MEC of Healthy and Mpopo, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, talking to their commitment to ensuring that the people of Botswana find closure, but also bringing to life the character of this little girl that is seen as a miracle child who survived that tragic crash.